it was doing like almost half a million views per hour. <gasps> yeah. What? Per hour. Is that even a thing? So the first topic, Freddie, is how you became one of the world's biggest car YouTubers. Good question. Because in my early days of car throttle, I used to read you on Jalopnik and I was like, but Tavares, what even is that name? But I used to read your stuff and then all of a sudden, like you've just blown up on YouTube. Like where, what happened before Jalopnik? What were you doing? So it's a, uh, you know, a, a funny aside. The first time I actually saw you was when I was doing a uh, Jalopnik um, uh, press drive. Uh, it was with McLaren. It, we went from Woking to Geneva for, for the Geneva Auto Show. And I saw you there and I'm like, well, this guy's, he's, he's a big deal. He's not going to. Did I ignore you? No, no, I, I, oh, I, I think I think I said I think I think I said hey, and you were like hey, and then you were like I, why, I why gotta was go. My, why was my voice way higher? You, you were like hey, hey, and then uh, you said uh, I have to go. Okay, and then I was like yeah, that's fine. I fo I fobbed Tavarish off. No, you yeah, did. yeah, yeah, I fobbed him off. But can I ask? Because I think a lot of people might not know what is Jalopnik? Jalopnik? Mm. Uh, Jalopnik was uh, was one of the biggest uh, car websites, car blogs. Uh, in the world now, I think I mean they still have they still do stuff, but it's uh, it's kind of a shell of what it used to be. Mm. Uh, so we had a lot of really cool writers. Um, you know, they they did a lot of uh, like anti-establishment. You know, the usual like road and track car and driver yeah, type yeah. thing. So they would do stuff like uh, break embargoes because they would get the information from elsewhere that wasn't embargoed. So and embargoes are basically you have this information about a new car and you can't release it until this date because a manufacturer. Yeah. Boring. Yeah. Won't give you a car if you don't. You know. But they, they were like, hey, we don't care about that stuff. So we'll just get it when we get it. And uh, they did a lot of this, you know, kind of punk. It, they're like the punk rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. whatever. So but they, they all disbanded because, you know, there's no money in that. So, but you know, I worked with uh, people like uh, Doug DeMuro. Um, and, uh, you know, that's when kind of, I started the YouTube channel, but the, to answer your question, the, you know, what I did before Jalopnik is, uh, I used to work on cars in my parents' driveway. Oh, and my first car was a 1998 Nissan Maxima. The first thing I did on that was I installed two 12 inch subwoofers in the back <laughs> and I actually had to call up the company that made the amp to see why it wasn't turning on. And then they told me that I needed a remote wire. Uh, and, and it's basically like a 12 volt source to, to, to turn on the amp. And I was like, so what sort of thing is that? How do I, <laughs> how do, I, how do, I do that? Uh, so that's the kind of, you know, uh, real in-depth wrenching that I was doing. Oh, yeah. Uh, but the first big thing I did on that car was a manual conversion. There was a, oh, there was cool. a tutorial online that was very badly written. And then uh, I got a $30 set of tools from uh, our you know, local auto parts store. And broke half of them, but then still, you know, still made it work. And then I did an engine swap and blah, blah, blah. I realized that I could do more of that stuff mm -hmm. uh, uh, for other people on the uh, forum. Like, because this was pre-Facebook uh, groups. Yeah, mad. And then I started doing stuff like that. And I would do, like, full suspension, like, uh, coilover installs for, like, 80 bucks. Wow. You know, and that was... And I was like, wow, okay, well, people, people really line up for that. Like, yeah, because I'm not charging anything. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I would do, um, you know, full engine, um, engine swaps for like $600, Wow. but it would take me a week. But I, I, I said to myself like, Hey, $600, I am loaded. Yeah. Oh yeah. How am I going to spend all this money? <laughs> you know, like what, what am I going to do with all this power? Um, but and then did you ever mess up when you were doing any of them? And oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 For sure. <laughs> there was one time I did a, did an engine swap for a guy. And he had an automatic car. And, uh, you know, when you put on a torque converter onto the engine, you have to you have to click it in twice, sometimes three times. I didn't know that. Uh, so I clicked it in once, put the, uh, the, the transmission on it, and uh, it just seized. Like, it just, it, it did not turn. Like, I tried to turn the car on, it didn't turn. And I'm like, oh, crap. So I looked it up, and apparently, I was like, oh, you need to put this in twice or mm. three times. I'm like, oh, crap. And I read all these horror stories about, well, now you just ruined the, the oil pump in the trans yeah, and yeah. now it needs a trans rebuild. And I'm like, crap. So I take off the transmission and then, you know, I reseed it, put everything in. And then thankfully everything was fine. Got lucky. I got, I got so lucky and the car drove. I mean, we, you know, took it on like a, a hundred mile road trip just to make sure yeah, that yeah. nothing was, nothing was bad. And I was like, okay. And then I think at that point I was like, 
I don't want to do this. <laughs> yeah. So your journey up to that point was kind of you were going to be a mechanic. You were going to start your own shop, maybe. Well, I wanted to do mobile auto repairs and modifications. Oh, okay. Um, so it was it was something where I was going to get a van and a bunch of tools and an air compressor and all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, what what if I just did you know little jobs for people and I could make money like that and then I could get more vans and and then you know it would like in my mind it would grow exponentially and then I started thinking about okay. So what if somebody gets hurt? Mm -hmm. What if I get hurt? What what about the liability? What if somebody's doing an oil change where they can't do an oil change because it's not like the 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 place isn't zoned for it or they mess something up? And then I start started going down this rabbit hole and I'm like, that sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> that sounds terrible. So then I start looking for. I go, all right. Uh, what about the internet? The internet's cool. You know, that's a that's a everybody's on the internet. Where are we in, in the YouTube world at that point? I am not. I'm not. This but, is. But is YouTube a thing at that point? This is YouTube is in its infancy. I think this is like first first year of YouTube. Mm. It's probably oh six. Okay. Okay. Um, and I think I put a few videos on YouTube just as like, I don't know. Here's my car trying to start. On, Can we know. find these videos? Yeah. Are, uh, are they still live? I may, uh, may, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. This is my car trying to start. So then I was like, okay, um, I'm not going to make any money actually doing this uh, thankless labor work. What if I had um, like an answering service, you know, where, where people would ask me mechanical questions and I charge them like five bucks. Oh, I thought you were going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Hey there, my name's, my name's Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing today? What are you wearing today for Tavares? <laughs> Do you want to be my friend? <laughs> That's not bad. I know. That's right? not bad. Yeah. No, it was it was it was more of like a you know ask a mechanic type, type okay, thing. Okay. Yeah. And then I thought, uh, you know, what's what's the market for this? Is are people like willing to uh, spend money on a on a question like this? And the answer to that is no. Yeah. No. I'm yeah. Not, yeah. Not. And I'm like that. That's 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 terrible. But then I thought, what if uh, I just like made a website and then that website had it was like a knowledge hub for everything, and I would do like how tos and whatever. And I could arrange them like a like a cookbook, you know. So let's say you wanted to do a cold air intake on your car, mm -hmm. and then it it would be like, all right, first thing, here's what you need, here's all the tools, here's the here's supplies, and then every single one of them would be like an Amazon link. Mm -hmm. So nice. I'd make I'd make money off that. Yeah. And then if I get people watching, you know, on my site, then I would put ads on it, mm -hmm. and then you know, you question marks and then profit, you know. Yeah. Like how do you how do you make that uh, that work? So was this before the days of where you could just go on YouTube and just there was there's a video yeah. for everything then? Yes, yeah, so, but, but the pretty, video pretty video. Chris Fix as well. Yeah. Um yeah, I think Chris Fix might have been just starting. Okay. Um but then I thought, you know, okay, I could I could do this and like videos would have helped for sure because then I could just link the video and it would still be a resource, but I could just make money off of like all the all the stuff that you need. The problem with that is that uh, I didn't know how to draw in an audience at all. Mm. Like, I was like, okay, I made a website. I had to learn how to make a website. And then I was like, okay, everyone, how do you, please come to my website. How do, <laughs> like, what, what do I do? I, I, how, how, how does this work? So I, I decided to do um, this thing, uh, this marketing campaign. And the marketing campaign consisted of me joining 400 Facebook groups. <gasps> and this is when groups just started. Wow. So when when uh, uh, forums kind of phased out and Facebook groups started, yeah. I joined every single car group I could wow. all over the world. Wow! And I co copy and pasted all like I used to write articles about on my own site about uh, the cars I used to buy and flip, and uh, you know not not unlike you know the st stuff you do. So I buy them crappy, modify them a little bit, yep. fix them up, and yep. then flip them. Sometimes I would make a profit and. Most of the time I didn't, but, uh, you know, I was watching, you know, Mike Brewer on Real Dealers and yeah, I'm like, yeah, I could yeah. do that. And yeah. it turns out I can't. <laughs> so, uh, I, I would write articles and then, um, you know, I would post them on these Facebook groups. And I, I remember after one article, I got like a thousand views and I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, that is, that is crazy. I never understood how, um, how you can get, you know, thousands and thousands mm. of views and I'm like, that's great, but like, am I gonna have to repost this? <laughs> like, yeah, what, yeah, what happens? Yeah, yeah. Like, how is this sustainable? Yeah. Uh, so then I found out that Jalopnik was, uh, it had this uh, open forum called Opposite Lock. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And Opposite Lock, anybody can post anything mm -hmm. uh, if you're a member. So I just became a member, and then I started posting my articles, 
And then my article got shared to the front page of Jalopnik. Oh, made it. Yeah. And overnight it got like 60,000 views. I'm wow. like, holy crap. Yeah. Like that is nuts. And then, yeah. and then those views, like some of them trickled down to my site. And I'm like, dude, this is awesome. And then I looked at my AdSense and I made like a dollar. Yeah, I was going to say, are you monetizing <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, I monetized it, but I had no idea how yeah, yeah, that yeah, worked. Yeah. Like I, just, I was just like, yeah, I'm going to put an ad here and here. That looks like good placement. Yeah. Made a dollar. <laughs> <Like 60, 000. laughs> yeah. So after that, um, you know, I wrote a uh, open letter to the uh, editor in chief of Jalopnik, who was Matt Hardigree at the mm-hmm. time. You know, I said, hey, you don't have anything like what I'm doing on your site, I would love to be just a part of this. I don't, I don't care about money or whatever. I just want to be a part of this. Cause at this time I was living with my parents and, uh, like two weeks later, he sent me an email. He said, Hey, uh, we actually have like a little bit of a budget. Would you like to be a part of it? And it was like 500 bucks a month. Mm. And I was like, hell yeah, That's I, cool. I want to, I want to be a part of this. So I became like a contributor to, to Jalopnik and I, w- I would write like every day. And I would write about, you know, you can buy a, uh, you know, Mercedes S-Class for the price of a Honda Civic, yeah, yeah. you know, that, that sort of thing. And that, that really took off. So yeah. that would get like 100,000 views. Jeez. And what's really cool is that even though it's like, you know, I didn't get much money for it, I should have been paying them because what it showed me was that uh, how to form an audience, mm-hmm. how to engage with that audience, what titles worked, what people wanted to see. And it's like, People go to school for that yep. and they pay a lot of money. And I was actually getting paid on the, on top of that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's like, this is, this is unfair. Uh, because now you have the the command of like, you know, essentially hundreds of thousands or millions of people sometimes. Yep. And you're also in this world. I mean, you were in the automotive journalist, you know, uh, world, like you're in this world with like, now you have access to these crazy experiences. Yeah. Like you have access to all these, all these people, you know, um, uh, CEOs of car companies and, uh, you know, these cars you just dream about. And now I, you know, me, you know, doing stuff uh, with my, uh, in my parents' driveway, I was now in that world from, you know, writing about my crappy, crappy cars. Yeah. Uh, so that's how I got into Jalopnik. And then, you know, from there I started YouTube because uh, Doug Demura had been doing it for a little while. And I just decided, I'm like, hey, if he could do it, then I could do so it. So this was a side gig? Did you ever think that YouTube would take off or what were you kind of honed in on Jalopnik more? So Jalopnik was a stepping stone. Uh, I, I never thought that it would it would actually be, you know, like a full-time job. Mm-hmm. I got like, I, I think a year or so in, I got a an offer um, to be like a staff writer. Um, it was It was more like, it wasn't. I don't think it was a, a like an official offer, but they said, "Hey, if you ever want to be a staff writer, just like we can we can make that happen." But a staff writer was making, I think, like sixty grand or something, um, you know, a year, which was, I mean, for to it's to, a lot to, more than in the UK. It's it, it's well, it's a lot. It's a lot more. It's it's a lot of money for somebody that sits in an air conditioned office yeah. and and then just writes car blogs all day. You know, like that's not bad money. Yeah. Um, but I was like, yeah, well, I I kind of like the uh, the freedom that I get from just being a freelancer. Cause I don't want to be like, well, they can tell me what to do and well, whatever, like with a freelancer, I could just be like, well, you know what? I'm not doing anything today. Then I started getting into YouTube. YouTube started paying the bills a little more. And then, you know, I also moved out of my, uh, my parents, um, uh, house and then we moved to Florida. Uh, so it's, it, you know, it, YouTube kind of became, you know, YouTube was my full-time job after that. Then I had to, you know, do a lot of stuff with, uh, um, these not, not super exotic cars, but like just cars that, uh, challenged me enough and people could see that I'm being challenged. And then that's when everything kind of, you know, started creeping upwards so, in terms of success. Yeah. Cause I would say the first, the first time I heard of you and it was when you bought that twin turbo Lamborghini. Yeah. And I, I, I think that's when your channel grew massive from, yeah. from that just just in a few weeks wasn't it from that yeah in like two months it went from like 150k subscribers to like 550 Whoa. and and it was we're still waiting for that aren't we yeah. yeah well to be fair especially back then as well that, that growth is that that was yeah. massive so what i noticed from that because i think i was the first person to really do like a um a exotic rebuild and then that year or like within a year everyone had an exotic car rebuild. Like yeah, they were like, yeah. all right, we're going to go into Copart and whatever. And people had been doing some like Copart rebuilds, but they had like varying levels of success. But that's the first one that really took off like in a big way. And every single one, I mean, like I was struggling to get 100,000 views on my videos for a very long time. It was very hit or miss. Mm. 100,000 view video was like, oh my God, that's 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 a really good, really good day. 
And these videos were doing three, four hundred thousand easy. Like, just like, yeah. you know, right off the bat. The first one got like, you know, a few million. And I'm like, oh my God, this is great. And like I had no idea what, you know, how many ads to put in or yeah. whatever, like what 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 good monetization was. But I was just like, okay, we have to keep this going. And then I ended up like burning out because I tried to do, you know, one video, like basically five videos a week on this. And like I had I was just five in my, videos a week. Well, I had to keep the the, the train Jeez. going. And I yeah. think something that a lot of people don't know about you, Freddie, as well. You are a one-man band, mostly. You, you have a bit of help on the mechanics and all this stuff. Yeah. But the video side of things is... You it, film and edit yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, feel, I film and edit everything myself, yeah. Yeah, which is... I don't. Is mental. I'm too lazy. I'm, I'm, I'm not lazy. I work very hard. But you must work. Like, you must just not sleep. Sleep is a sleep. Sleep is a fun thing. It's a it's a fun. You know, I, I'll, I'll think about that maybe uh, in in the future. Because I, I get, I, time get I get really cranky if I don't sleep. Are you not like that? Oh, I'm cranky all the time. That's, that's my that, that's my secret. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's your USP. <laughs> this, yeah, yeah, I'm just I have a resting bitch face. <laughs> um, no, I mean it, it. It takes a toll for sure. What I think of is uh, when I do any sort of um, editing on my own. I realized that you you have a lot of storytelling in the edit. Yeah. And I want to be in charge of that storytelling. I'm not a big fan of having other people do the edit because then you have uh, notes that you have to do. Like, all right, how many notes passes are we going to do? And am I micromanaging too much? And then like, all right, is, is this person getting paid enough? Or like, is this person have the same vision as me? And then, you know, can they save a bad bit? Like if I'm doing something and I go, ah, that, that's a that looks like crap. Like what, mm. you know, can we do anything to it with editing? You, there's like lots of different options that you can do. Mm. And I'm also a really big fan of, um, I need to understand a thing in order to like, really, um, like I, I understand how to edit. So I know what's possible and what isn't. Yeah. If I tell an editor like, Oh, can you, um, can you just make my face not look like that? You know, like they're going to be like, what 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 are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, like I don't know yeah, what that yeah, means. Yeah. Like yeah, it looks it just looks a little weird. So you have a like a self image problem. A self image. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah, you might want to go to therapy for that. Yeah. So so, so sorry, Freddie. What you're saying is that I don't actually need anyone. I, I can just do this. No, no no that's not what you're, you're setting. You're giving, so, no, so, no, so, no, 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 that's not. Bro, shh, where's you, your off button? You, where's your off button? You stop this right, right now. now. <laughs> so we, I mean, who who owns these cameras? Uh, uh, I think I own that one. Do I? Own you that one? you own. Well, that's the only one we need. You, that's, that's, you that's own good. one of them, and then I'm having that everything thing. else is pretty much me. Okay, okay, I'll do it on an iPhone. Yeah, you know, they, they sell... I don't have an iPhone. No. I need to buy an iPhone. They sell these lights to... Other, you know, you can just buy them. You know that, right? Oh, these lights aren't missing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. So, yeah. so what? No, no, no. Just, no. just sack them off? You're a real nice guy, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I don't even do the editing anymore as well. That's, that's a whole other person. Do you have, a, you have a team of people, don't we you? We have a team of people, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, not we. I have a team of people because <laughs> yeah. it's just me now. Yeah, you just... I mean, you, you're Mr. Beast over here. You just uh, do you have a person that that just follows you around and just makes decisions for you because you're too busy to make decisions? Um, that would be me. Are you the shadow? Yeah, that is me. That, so Rory is actually my work wife. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that right, darling? Yeah. It's, yeah. Because he's so unorganized that he just can't. Do, so I'm going to say this. Actually, I, I don't care. <laughs> oh, we, we had a bill out. come through today. Uh, I've been very busy. Which Alex has just, so we moved into this unit three months ago and he's just ignored a letter that just came through. I didn't the, ignore it. I just didn't see it. Yeah. And then he's ignored another one. And then basically no, I we've, we've got a, a threat of debt collectors to come for the, pa for the, Those are uh, fun. For the electricity bill. Because it's just, just a threat. He, he completely forgot to even sign it up. Oh, so yeah. I managed to get that sorted there. Good. <laughs> yeah. Well done. This podcast is sponsored by Tire Streets UK, where you can get 10% off your tires using the code AUTOALEX. We use Tire Streets for all of our cars. And so should you. And so should you. I will. 10% off using the code AUTOALEX. The Copart stuff blew up for you. And also what Pimp My Ride stuff blew up for you, didn't it? Yeah, the Pimp My Ride van was interesting. So I bought a Pimp My Ride van that was uh, featured in one of the uh, one of the episodes. It was a, a pink and purple uh, minivan. It's a Dodge uh, Voyager, mm -hmm. uh, Plymouth Voyager Expresso. This van cost me 850 bucks. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and I thought that everyone would be super interested in it on the YouTube front, but it was up for sale for like four months. Oh, wow. There have been like multiple articles written on it, like Road and Track, Jalopnik, The Drive. And all no that. one bought it. No one bought it. And like I just called them up and I said, hey, is this van for sale? Like, yep, still for sale. I'm like, I will give you money right now. Yeah. He's like, I will give you above asking price if you Ooh. want. And uh, I had the van delivered to me. I did uh, like three videos on it. And the first video... It did well, like it did, it did pretty well. Um, but then the second video did number one on trending. 
And it nice. was doing something like, this was 2019, I think, Christmas of 2019. And it was doing like almost half a million views per hour. <gasps> yeah. What? Per hour. Is that even a thing? It is. Oh. Um, yeah. That, that's like, you know, that, that would be a bad day for Mr. Beast right now. But like, it's, it's still half like. Half a million an hour. Yeah. So I think all three videos got like something like 23 million views. Um, and it was, it was crazy because uh, I never got anything like that. It was, you know, especially being number one on trending, like yeah, right after yeah. Christmas. I was like, holy crap, this, yeah, is, this yeah, is great. Yeah, yeah. That has to be the highest like return of investment. Oh, yeah. Car oh, yeah. that you've ever bought, isn't it, really? Oh, yeah. So yeah. that so that van, um, I mean, we don't have to really talk about numbers, uh, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of things. But like that van made me like $200,000. Yeah. That is that, so that's so. just ad, ad revenue. Was that sponsored by? It, it was sponsored. Well? It was sponsored. Okay, so yeah, it yeah. had like, there was a sponsor on it too. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was quite lucrative to, to get an $850. <laughs> and that's how you make money on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And, but, but I remember I, I talked to uh, Mr. Beast's manager like about a year ago. Uh, I think he called me up because he wanted to get more information about the car space. Yeah. I think he represents some other car YouTubers. And, um, you know, he he looked at my channel and he was like, hey, you should do more of these like, you know, like these pimp my ride things like because it got a really good return. I'm like, you don't think that every mm. day that I do a YouTube video is like, I'm not trying to chase that same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like if I could do that every day, I would. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It's like it's, it's like lightning in a bottle because yeah, it's, it's hit and miss sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. And what, what's interesting is that after the pimp my ride van happened, a lot of other pimp my ride like contestants or people who own the cars, they came out to me and they said, hey, I, I want to sell the car. And then I go, how much? And they go, $75,000. Oh, I'm like, right. I'm like yeah, 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 I'm not paying yeah. 75 grand for your escort. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, like yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I think it's just because the story was this car was forgotten mm -hmm. and now I got it so everything in it works. Yeah, you yeah, know, we yeah. cleaned it up and now it's, you know, repimping the pimp, yeah, pimp ride. Yeah. Um, and now the car is at the Peterson Automotive Museum. So. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So what are your YouTube numbers now? Like stats, uh, subscribers, views and everything? Because you are like, what top five probably car youtubers in the world is that, is that I, right? I don't i don't know i mean there, there's people who are b a lot bigger than me um so i have two 2.6 million um subscribers i haven't posted so this is kind of like a down month uh for me because i have i really hadn't posted i only posted like one video last month on the p1 um so i think i have and like, that just sees you through for the month right uh it, it does um but i mean if i could do if I could do four videos a month on that car, I'd probably get like 12 million views or, or, yeah, or a little, yeah. little more than that. I take it it's not as easy though with that car because there's, there's no. so much behind the scenes that's probably it's, going on. Yeah, it's a lot because it's, ugh, God, it's, it's a lot of um, problem solving, uh, parts buying, talking to people and then actually doing the work. And then, you know, it, it everything takes time. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's really funny. In the last, uh, one of my last videos, uh, we ended up, we went to Goodwood. So I, I recorded with the Lanzante cars who, who make, you know, a bunch of custom P1s. Oh, I saw I, that, yeah. So I recorded with those. Uh, I had um, some carbon fiber work, like uh, carbon fiber repair work done. Um, I uh, recorded with the people that uh, are doing my custom body for the P1. We we fit that up. So there, there's there's that. We did some, uh, you know, I, and then I flew to Chicago to do, uh, to take apart the engine. And then like some people are complaining is like, oh, well, you didn't do anything in this episode i'm like dude i flew like six thousand miles yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like i had to i had to go to so many like just to record one video and i'm like oh you didn't you didn't do it like what what do you what exactly do you think i need to do <laughs> it's like what what is a good video for you why, look why like? is it why is it not started why is it not doing two yeah it's like why, why are you yeah, why are you not yeah. like yeah. this thing should be done in 45 minutes Indeed, you know? yeah 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 like it's it's because tiktok it's ruined everyone's lives i don't think i don't think it's tiktok i, I think it might have been you know like the uh, the overhauling or fast and loud or whatever it was like mm. we got this car from the junkyard needs to go to sema tomorrow you know like it's we're gonna lose the shop it's that sort of like like everything is done in an hour mm. and look how far the car has come like yeah. yeah right but here's the thing those are lies like they're not they're not actually doing that mm. uh so like in a real car build especially when you don't know what you're doing like like i don't mm. Uh, then you have to solve a bunch of problems and you have to do, you have to be really creative because it's not like I could just go down to the store and buy McLaren parts. Yep. So uh, even McLaren doesn't have parts for that car. Jeez. 
And if they do, they're crazy expensive. Yeah, like the yeah, yeah. Uh, the rear clamshell is one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Jesus Christ! You know, that, just just the, just the bodywork alone. You know, just the door skin is eighty two thousand dollars. Wow! What? Each so one. How, how yeah. deep are you in? Currently? I'm actually so I'm actually not that bad. Good. Okay. Um. So I've been really creative. I, like I'd be surprised if I was like a hundred grand into it. Okay. Um, is that including buying? No, no, that's just, just no, no, no. The buy, the buying is yeah, the buying is one thing. Yeah. But I'm saying 100, 100 grand on yeah, top yeah, of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then you'll have a P1 for, well, like, I don't know, half a million or so? Well, it would be like se- yeah, 700, something okay. like that. But then you've Maybe. got a 2 million pound hypercar. Well, that yeah. you'll never sell. Well, no, I'll never sell it. And and uh, what I want to do with it is is also uh, quite a lofty goal. So I always thought the P1 was a spiritual successor to the F1. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I want that car to be the fastest McLaren in the world, uh, meaning in, in top top speed. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, you know, this right, is news. So have you released how you're planning to do that? Yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I put it in one of my videos. So we're calling it the P1 Evo, and uh, the car is going to have, um, you know, the, the engine is going to make somewhere uh, north of like 1,300 horsepower. Um, but you won't have hybrid anymore, will you? So I don't, I don't know yet. Okay. Uh, I, I've been really. Um, you know, doing the pros and cons sort of Venn diagram here. That car has a hybrid system that's unlike any other. Uh, it has a bespoke battery that, you know, if you were to go to McLaren and they, they even had it, it's $160,000. Wow. Yeah. And that's for 4.7 kilowatt hours. 4.7 kilowatt hours is less than you get in one Tesla cell. And right, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah. you can make make up that power in more creative ways, like boost. Right? Yeah, you can. So if you took that away, not only could you make that up that power if you mm-hmm. built the engine and you know added boost and whatever, but it also uh, reduces weight. Mm-hmm. And reducing weight in that car would be like, like now you have a thirteen hundred horsepower car that weighs you know well twenty nine hundred pounds would be like I don't know like uh twelve hundred kilos or yeah, something about thirteen hundred yeah like yeah yeah. So that's it's nothing. Isn't it? Yeah. So so it would it would literally be like a Koenigsegg one to one or like you know something like that. But then you know is it really is that the soul of the car? You know because the car was like you know the the hybrid the uh, hypercar holy trinity blah, blah blah. And then you know comes the 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 whole integration side of things. Like how can I make that work? Because no other P one is like that. Yeah. You know the car doesn't have a starter. You know there's no starter in it. Oh. So you know the electric motor dro- drove everything. So it doesn't have an alternator, no starter, nothing. So you'd have to get a different block. Like there's a lot of geeky stuff. Like yeah, the, yeah. the wiring harness is different. The car doesn't know there doesn't have a hybrid system. So how do you have you yeah, yeah. you know fool it into doing that? Has this crazy hydraulic system where you know the wing goes up and it does the air brake thing and it does like it has all these modes and race mode. Yeah, it's it's pretty nuts and it's never been done before. But that's that's why I like it because it's uh, it's a it's a challenge. Yeah. And, uh, but at least with that, you know, if, if I don't have a hybrid system, that's a challenge that I can kind of wrap my head around. Mm-hmm. But if I have to make a battery, um, one thing is like, I don't know enough about batteries that I could trust someone else to, to make this battery and then not worry about electrical fire gotcha. or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or like, you know, um, the, the, the way it uh, it dissipates its energy or the way it uh, heats up or whatever. Like there's so many unknowns yeah. there and it would just drive me crazy. So you're chasing top speed. Yeah. What, what are you tra- what, what's your goal? Uh, 260 plus. <laughs> yeah. Two, oh, so like plus. Veyron, Chiron. Sort of yeah, 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 yeah. So, ah, so the, okay. the fastest car at that time was the Veyron Supersport. Yep. And I think that did like 267. I'm not, I, I mean, it doesn't have to beat that. I just want it to be faster than the speed tail, which is 250. Do I, you want to be driving it? doing no, that no and okay. does it have to survive after you've done it yeah yeah absolutely okay. yeah yeah <laughs> so i want it to be you like, can't just like put a bit of nitrous in and just go whoosh we could do that um but it's like imagine I, the youtube series after that i blew up the world's fastest mclaren yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> that'd be great um i want this car to look like it came out of uh came out of mclaren like if mclaren had a skunk works you know yeah, like yeah, a yeah. secret yeah. mg black division or whatever i want this car to to look like um, this is what we've been working on and this is going to be some world beater and, and yeah. whatever. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Ben Collins has expressed interest in, uh, in doing this. He said he's down. Um, uh, I, I'll be free. Yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll be free. You can- I'm actually as fast as Ben Collins on track. As we, you still as haven't proved. proven this. You, oh, we proved my no. time was the, the exact same no. time as in his. a different car. I was in a broken car. In a different, it was his car was broke. also his car. My was also car broken. I didn't have a clutch. He nearly ran out of clutch. He nearly rolled that car too. 
Yeah, but that was in the intro. Did we keep that in the intro? No. No. So when we were doing intros, we wanted Ben Collins to come in sideways and like lift the handbrake. And the handbrake was really shit that he overshot it and he kind of... The, the handbrake, it, it only worked on one side. So he yeah. literally just yeah. flat spotted one tire. Yes. I yes. like that. And also nobody, either nobody knew or nobody told him that, that this was yeah. the case. Yeah. So yeah. we had him keep, keep <laughs> doing it. And he was very upset. And he said, uh, please don't put that in because I'm a very good uh, racing driver. And people will think that I'm a bit, bit shit. Please don't do that. So we, we took it out. But it wasn't because he was shit. It was because the car was shit. Because Taylor's car was shit. And it also blew up at 140 miles an hour because the car was shit. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I mean, Ben is like the best guy in the world. Oh, he's fantastic. He, he's he he's is. so cool. Yeah, he is really cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, got a lot of time for Ben. But yeah, uh, I mean, if uh, I'm throwing my name in the hat as well, you know. Maybe, okay. Maybe we talk. Can you can you, uh, can you you hold down an accelerator pedal until how fast, it doesn't... How, how far does the seat go forward? Uh, Quite a bit. Okay, yeah, perfect. Quite a bit. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you've, maybe you've actually been close to that speed as well, haven't you? I've done 222 miles now. That's insane. Genuinely. On the Autobahn. On the chip. In, in, in what? Uh, in the Bugatti Veyron Supersport. Oh, look, in the look world's at you. fastest time at the time. Oh, yeah. you know. It's, uh... They're pretty cool. I don't like to brag about it. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never been in a Bugatti before, so, you know. That's, yeah, yeah, no, like when fine. I speak to people, the first thing, my opening line is, ha, how fast have you driven? <laughs> and if they're like 100, I'm like, I'll just ha, walk away. Yeah. If, yeah. If, you're not, if you haven't done 200 miles an hour, miles an hour I don't have time for you. Have, uh, have you really lived if you haven't done 200 miles an hour? No, yeah. no, you haven't. No, you yeah. haven't. No. no. No one's lived. So anyway, once you have done that, once P1 is done, uh, what what then? I have other projects that I I'd like to do. Uh, I'm not gonna announce them because like there, there's there's a few that are up in the air that I think would be really interesting. Oh no, you can because no one no one listens to this. No one listens to this. No, 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 okay, no, no, no. top five podcasts. Sorry, top five was it? Yeah, top, top five podcasts. Top, top yeah, five, sorry, sorry. Top five. Yeah, there are only four podcasts in the UK, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. yeah, this one. There's only there's only four, and we come in number five. Yeah. <laughs> Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> so yeah, you got some exciting stuff uh, in your brain that you can't tell us yet. Yeah, yeah. But so, for now, P one. Uh, I mean, the P one is going to be the thing for a while. Yep. Um, you know, we're going to try to have it done for SEMA, but like, it's not going to be, um, you know, completely finished. Uh, you know, where we're like setting records or anything. If I can get the car running and driving by SEMA, it's going to look, every, you know, like ha- going to have all the looks and uh, going to have the body done and blah blah blah. But if I can have the car running and driving by SEMA. That'll be a big, big deal. And at, as at the time of this recording, we have about two months left. Yeah. So, okay. And then I'm also Good doing luck. like petrol hedonism and all that stuff. So I'm just You're <laughs> very busy. You are very, very busy. Yeah. Uh, speaking of be- being very busy, uh, we don't want to keep you much longer on this particular question. Shall we move it on, Rory? Yes. What's the second question that we've got? 